السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلني خبر قبل قليل أحد الشباب ممن يحضر هذا المجلس ويحضر المجلس هنا يجلس هنا صار لك كم ليلة يحضر شاب وجهه كالقمر هل يوم توفى في حادث سير فطلب منا أن نقرأ له سورة الفاتحة فالفاتحة مع الصلوات أسأل الله أن يحفظ جميع الشباب بحق القاسم بن الحسن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين بعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم صدق الله العلي العظيم We all know the importance and significance of charity in Islam the importance of giving صدقة the Quran and in several verses speaks of paying charity paying sadaqa in one verse allah says alam ya'lamu anna allah huwa huwa yaqbalu at-tawbata 'an 'ibadihi wa ya'khudh wa ya'khudh as-sadaqat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the charity when you pay allah takes the charity we have narration saying that when you give charity to someone when you pay sadaqa when you put the money in in the poor person's hand it is recommended to kiss your hand because your hand metaphorically has touched the hand of allah azza wa jal kiss your hand you've shaken the hook you've shaken the the hand of allah azza wa jal of course allah doesn't have a hand but this is metaphoric that means allah has immediately accepted this deed and another verse in tubdu sadaqat fanimmahiya وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Giving charity in private or in public, both are good deeds. By giving it in, in private has more reward than giving it in public. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ بِهَا وَتُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتَزُكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Many verses on the value of charity. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala yaqul ma min shay'in illa wa qad wakkaltu bihi man yaqbidahu ghayri illa sadaqa fa'inni atalaqqafuha biyadi talaqqafan. Everything in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels that do for him. Allah has angels that obey his commands that do things for him except receiving the charity Allah does not have angels that receive the charity he himself receives the charity you put the charity in, in Allah's hands of course again Allah does not have hands this is metaphoric that means Allah immediately accepts accepts your charity Allah rewards you for your charity another narration charity repels evil repels tragedies like car accidents like car accidents i advise all of my dear my brothers and sisters families you have you who have children you have youth that drive 
They go out in the morning, they drive, they go, they give, they go long distances, give sadaqa. Give sadaqa, even if it's a small amount, even if it's a quarter of a dollar, half of a dollar, a dollar every day. Give sadaqa. It will repel evil. It will repel that bala. It will repel any tragedy that is meant to fall upon you or your family. It will repel it. Al sadaqa tadfa'ul bala. In another narration, al sadaqa tamna'u sab'ina nawa'an min anwa'al bala. Ahwanuha al judam wal baras. When you give sadaqa, when you give charity, it repels 70 kinds of evil. 70 kinds of evil. Illnesses, sicknesses, uh, car accidents, getting in, a, in an accident at home, at work, getting into trouble with the government, with the authorities. It will repel 70 kinds of tragedies. In another hadith, as sadaqa tasaddu sab'ina baban min ash sharr 70 doors of evil will, will be closed because of sadaqah. Thus we see a major emphasis on sadaqah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now a question, a very important question. Who deserves sadaqah? Is it only Muslims? Or can you give your sadaqah to non-Muslims? You can give your sadaqah to a non-Muslim as well. The sadaqah doesn't only go to Muslims. Yes, khums and zakat has to go to, uh, to Muslims and specifically to mu'mineen, your khums and your zakat. But other than that, the sadaqah, when you wake up in the morning, when you take out a dollar, a quarter, half of a dollar, any amount, and you pay for sadaqah to repel evil, it doesn't have to be a Muslim. No, it could be anyone, even a non-Muslim. I've seen in some countries, in some places, there's beggars that stand. When you exit from the freeway, there's a beggar. Someone holding up a sign, asking for money. Give that money to them. It will repel evil, even if it's a non-Muslim. As Sayyidu Sistani, Hafizullah, in his Rasala, he says, Tajuzu sadaqa al manduba ala al ghani wal mukhalif wal kafir ghayr al harbi. As long as this non-Muslim is not fighting you in the battlefield, you can give him sadaqah. You can give her sadaqah. This is allowed. This is allowed. There's a lot of homeless. There's a lot of poor. Muslim and non-Muslim. But now, tonight, I'd like to talk about non-Muslims that are poor. Let's give them. If you see someone standing on the street, at the mall, at a store, at a traffic light, and they want money, you have change, give them change. You have cash, give them cash. You can. You can give your sadaqah to non-Muslim. In fact, the Quran gives us a principle. Al-aqrabuna awla bil ma'roof. If they are poor in your city, give it to them. They have a priority before others. Before you take out the sadaqah, the charity that you have to another city, to another country, first ask. Have I fed all of the poor people in my city? Have I fed all of the poor people in my country? Even if they're not Muslim. So what? Are they a human or not a human? They're a human. When you feed anyone, when you quench the thirst of anyone, even an animal. See, Islam teaches us that even if you give water to an animal, to a cat, to a dog, to a bird, this is a good deed. This is a good deed. This is a, a form of charity. Islam doesn't say only give charity to Muslims and don't give to non-Muslims. No. Give sadaqah even to non-Muslims. Yes, as I said, khums and zakat, that's another story. Khums and zakat, we have to give it to mu'mineen specifically. But other than that, as-sadaq al-manduba, as-sadaq al-mustahabba, the recommended charity, you could give to non-Muslims. You could give to Christians, to Jews locally, spend it on the poor people locally. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Muhammad. One of the best ways to promote Islam and enhance the image of Islam and Muslims is through charity. And remember that our series is on Islamic activism in the West. How to promote Islam and how to enhance the image of Islam and Muslims 
in Western society. One way is through charity work. Give charity. Sometimes you can give on an individual level. You see someone poor, you give them. Sometimes we start an organization. For example, we, had a, we have a food drive, a food bank at our local Islamic centers, especially during Muharram, Ramadan, when we have an excess amount of food, let's gather it and let's take it to the poor, to the homeless, in the name of Islam, in the name of Muslims, in the name of our local Islamic centers and mosques. Do you know how much this will improve the image of Islam? How much service this will do for Muslims and Islam? This will give out an image that Islam is a humanitarian religion. Islam cares for humanity. Islam is not selfish. Doesn't say give charity only to Muslims, but non-Muslims as well. This improves the image of Islam. Let's open clinics, local clinics, medical clinics. It doesn't have to be an entire hospital. Something small, one room with medical equipment for non-Muslims, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. This will do a major service, a major service to Islam and Muslims. The Catholic Church, let's, let's learn from the Catholic Church the amount of charity work that they do all across the world. One of the ways that they call people to Christianity is not by passing out books or lectures. No, by charity work, by hospitals. There's a famous hospital in the Middle East, in Lebanon specifically, in Beirut. The American University in Beirut and the American Hospital Al-Jami'a Al-Amerikiya, Mustashfa Al-Jami'a Al-Amerikiya, in Lebanon. Do you know how many Iraqis from Iraq, I know personally, you know, they go and they have surgeries at that university, uh, at that uh, university hospital, university hospital. Do you know who established that hospital? The church. Over a hundred years ago, the Catholic Church came and established this hospital in the middle of the Islamic world. In the middle of Lebanon, in the heart of Lebanon. Why? To promote Christianity. To call people to Christianity. Why don't we do work like this? All across America you will find clinics and hospitals owned by the church. Seven day Baptist. Um, all kinds of denominations in Christianity. Catholics, Baptists, seven day Baptists, Jehovah Witness. They all have hospitals and clinics. This is how they call people to Christianity. Right? It's about time that we do charity work as well. This will enhance the image of Islam. Look at what the Catholic Church is doing in Africa and in the Middle East. Charity does great work for Islam. You can enhance the image of religion through charity work. We, alhamdulillah, we have good charity work done in the West. But it's not enough. We have organizations that are doing a fabulous job. I will mention one organization only as an example. And I don't mean to extol or praise anyone. But just to give an example, there is an organization in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan, called Zaman, Zaman International. And it's called Zaman after the name of Al-Imam Sahib Al-Asri was Zaman. Ajarallahu ta'ala faraja. This organization does work in the Muslim community and the non-Muslim community. They pass out food, there's food drives, they pass out clothing, they provide shelter for battered women, women that are abused by their husbands, physically abused, they provide shelter, they provide money, they give out loans, they give out food. And a lot of it goes to non-Muslims. And I've been told that they have lots of volunteers and many of their volunteers are non-Muslim. Imagine, Americans come and volunteer at an Islamic organization. Why? Because they like their work. Because they like what they do. They come and they volunteer. They give out of their time on the weekends, weekdays, and they volunteer. Because everyone likes charity work. Sometimes you can call Islam, people to Islam through lectures and books. Sometimes you can call them through, the, through your actions, through your charity, through your money through your kindness. This is one of the ways that we can call people to Islam. And this is what Imam Hussein also taught us. Look at Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein, 
offered all that he had. And he called his people to Islam in many ways through his blood, through his sermons, through his companions, through his children. And one of the ways was through charity. How? When the army of Hur, Al Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi, they stopped him in the middle of the desert. Imam Hussein still had water. His caravan had water, but the army of Al Hur did not have water. Imam Hussein realized he saw the thirst on the face of Al Hur and his army, even their horses. Imam Hussein gave them what? He gave them water to his enemy soldiers. Those who in a couple of days will fight him and kill him. He gave them water. Not just to them, their horses. He gave their horses water. He saw one of those soldiers, he's giving water from, from the water that Imam Hussein's army gave. He was giving his horse water, but the water was falling. It was being wasted. Imam Hussein told him, no. See? He brought the water closely, and he let the horse drink. Some historians say that if Imam Hussein السلام, had not given his enemies water, he hadn't given Al Hur ibn Yazid water, he would have had enough water on the day of Ashura. He would have had enough water. But he gave his enemies water. This is an act of charity. This is an act of kindness. Let's learn from Imam Hussein. Let's spread Islam and spread the message through acts of kindness and acts of charity. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين